Now that I got the front half of the roll cage done on the sub, it's time to do the rear part of the cage. Now all this was pretty easy to do, uh, just simple bends with the uh, hydraulic pipe bender. But now for the back end, I need a pipe roller. I've been using uh, this as kind of a reference on uh, making my roll cage. So you'll see here that I have very large radiuses that curve around the back of the Jeep. So now you just you can't do this on just a simple pipe bender. I mean it'd be more like a kink, kink, kink. So I need something that'll swoop it. So you'll see I need to make one hoop here and then two pieces that are identical to each other to go there. So what I've done is I've marked out on the floor where I want the pipes to go down into the frame and then they're going to connect to the middle bar right here. So how are you going to do that you may ask? With the Harbor Freight pipe roller. So to get my inch and three quarter tubing uh, for that roll cage, uh, you can't use the dies that come with it. I think they come with like one inch, inch and a half and two inch. So what I had to do is uh, I bought new dies from a place called Swag Off Road. You can find a lot of their posts in uh, Pirate 4x4 forum. Uh, they sell these parts on eBay. They also have their own website. So this is my inch and three quarter dies. So you'll notice with the original Harbor Freight uh, pipe roller that it's got a lot of flaws in it, which they have uh, fixed. Like uh, you can buy a kit that turns this into a uh, bottle jack setup. So you just tap it and it'll push down on the pipe rather than manually turn in this. Uh, they make new bearings for this. And... Uh, so for what I'm doing, I, I mean, I've only been in three pipes, so I didn't get crazy. So one cool thing you'll notice that the original shaft for that is just a normal shaft. And then this has some set screws in it that keeps it in place. Well, the Swag Off-Road one goes a little bit further. So you can see that they actually have a keyway in here, as well as spots for set screws on the outside. So in order to use that, you'll just have to get the uh, shaft that they sell which is slotted for the key. So one thing that I'm doing is that they told me over the phone that the major flaw with this is that uh, when you roll your pipe, you know, you go to angle it up. Sometimes it angles up and it turns sideways. It gets a little crooked, so what they recommend doing is that if you see here, there's a lot of slack in there. So what I've got here is uh, a bunch of shims, and my goal is to tighten these up as best that I can so it keeps the pipe from rolling around sideways on me. So hopefully when I'm done, all these will be perfectly straight. They won't move side to side. And uh, it'll keep the pipe rolled straight on uh, both sides rather than rolling crooked. So we're going to install that, shim it, and uh, see what it does. Alrighty, so this looks pretty simple to change out. Uh, there's a clip on each end of this. So I'm going to pull the clip off of this end. And you can see it sliding back and forth quite a bit. So pull that, knock the spacer out, you see that there are bearings inside of this, so you pop those out, put that in there, Now I used one big shim on the other side, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So first I'll put this in, then the big shim, see now we have hardly any wiggle back and forth. So let's just clip that thing. So check that out. That's all the wiggle we've got. Now I didn't want to make it have zero wiggle because uh, I knew that the tube would probably have to find its place in here just a little bit. So that should keep it pretty straight in there. I did have to uh, pull this top pin out right here and uh, I put some shims behind it because this thing right here kind of wanted to be at an angle like this so I was bringing it back straight. So I basically have just enough tubing to do the rear half of the roll cage. I mean, the one stick is 
I only have 30 inches extra, so I basically have one shot at this. So just as extra precaution, what I've done is marked off each spot where I need to start every side of my bend. I'm going to keep that blue line facing up to the middle of the roller at all times. Everything is shimmed, everything is out of the way between each ends of the pipe. And then lastly, I'm going to have a piece of paper and I've got the socket. So the socket is going to start in the same position every time I turn this thing. So the socket, you can go exactly halfway and start it. So every time I make a move on the left side, I'm going to mirror on the right. So let's just say I do 0.5 of a turn on the socket. And then I do that. Let's just say the 0.5 turn and rolls the pipes really nice. So I do 0.5 and then I'll mark it with tallies how many times I did that to get my uh, curve on the tube. And then it'll be the same thing on the other side. Alrighty, so here's the number of times that I did uh, each tube, bent it in the roller. So I did nine times of so about quarter turn on each side. And here is the result of it. So you see this part is going to be the straight back part. And then I started my roll about here and went to about here. And the way to check uh, if it went crooked was you put it on the flat floor and you see just a tad bit of movement. Not bad at all. I mean, you're never going to get it perfect with that roller, but uh, that's about as good as it's going to get. So now you'll see that the bend, see if I wanted to keep going with the roller and go like this, I mean the bend would be huge. So what I'm going to do now is put in our hydraulic pipe bender, and I'm going to give it a little bit of an assist bend right here to get this. This is a curve that I want for the Jeep, so I'm going to kick that curve out to about here. So then it'll be sharp curve and then it'll roll right into the roll bar. Alrighty, we finally have the hoop put in the Jeep and then I've got one support bar here. So what I've done is uh, lined up the hoop with the seat belt bar that goes all the way across here. So you see that end matches as well as that end. Now I did that purposely because like I showed earlier that piece was a little bent. So if you look from this angle the back part's kind of angling down like this. So what I did is uh, the piece that's up the highest, I already made the support bracket for that. I already have it bolted down to the tub and I also have a plate underneath the tub so all that's bolted in and then that's all welded that that's welded I mean just tacked so now what I'm going to do is get a jack on this corner jack it up a little bit where I want it I'll put another tube under there do the same thing as that bolt it all through and then it should be good to go This is the last update of the Jeep assembled in one piece without paint. What we got going here is a 
modified snorkel exhaust with a hater pipe on top. It exits the hood in such a swell fashion. And it goes with the same angle as a roll bar all the way up. We also have new suspension, tires, shackles. So the our old tires were 6 uh, by 16 and these are 750 by 16. So I basically went from like a 28 inch tire to about a 30 to 31 inch. Same tread, same exact tread, basically same company that makes them. Done a little bit of uh, practice on aluminum welding with the spool gun. Very interesting. So the gas tank is mounted through this, uh, we got a front section right here, and this little bracket is for the crotch strap on the racing harness. And then back here, we have a bunch more uh, stuff to hold on the gas tank, just to be extra sure. Roll cage is finally complete. Yeah, that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. We've just got speed coming all the way around. I'd say this project was pretty successful. So now with the uh, bigger tires and the uh, suspension, this is OEM suspension basically. All just standard leaf springs, 8 front, 9 rear, uh, with the custom shackle made just like my other Jeep. I don't know who in the world thought that the C-shaped shackle was a good idea back in the day, but can't have that so basically I have about 10 inch of uh, clearance on the diffs and then about 13 inch on the uh, transmission cross member the frame is bolted to the roll cage up here as well as back here on these two as you can kind of see right there also have these tabs for the racing harness shoulder straps now I need to uh, just kind of cut these up a little bit make them pretty but they are at uh, the correct height which is why the bar sits up a little bit higher than I planned in my picture of the uh, rendering but that's because uh, it's set perfect for the shoulder strap so that's nice we have the snorkel hose brackets made nicely uh, welded to the roll cage there so good and sturdy also have the theoretical position of the exit on the snorkel. So let's see, old glory. Oh, that is a new hood. I just couldn't sleep at night knowing the other hood was dented in. So uh, originally I went to the exhaust shop and had this made because I just didn't feel like doing it myself. And they did a pretty good job, but I uh, set them up for failure, basically. Um, I knew that the exhaust was going to come out. I wanted it about right here to be perfect along with the uh, exit of the intake so they'd be right alongside not one here, one over there. So I marked on the fender where I wanted it to exit. What I did not take into account is that the hood actually rests about three inches past this part of the fender. And I only marked it right here so when we took it in and had the exhaust come out right about here and it swooped close to the body. Well, the problem was when you go to close the hood, the exhaust was running right on this line. So it was either I was going to have to cut this whole part of the hood open or just uh, modify the exhaust a little bit. So I cut it in a few different spots, uh, did some twisting, and then I did a little bit of an extension uh, right there, changed the angle of everything. So now we've got plenty of clearance between the body here and then now I can fit my fingers back here before I could not. Um, here's my ingenious radiator positioning. Electric fan, I had to have that because of water and uh, there's just no clearance between that water pump. So I knew that the fan had to be on the radiator because when they bounce they need to bounce together. You need as much room as possible. So the radiator is both down to the frame and then I took the original mutt engine bracket right here and I extended it about one inch over to this side here so that way I could run this bolt in the spacer right through to keep the radiator pushed forward 
so it's actually leaning like this and for some reason the radiator's been hit or bent or something it's kind of wonky but um so the fan is ingenious as well I took the shroud off the radiator and then I have these pieces of metal that screw right into where the original shroud went and this is made out of really uh, thick steel and I made it so that it's so tight against the radiator that it essentially clamps the fan in place I mean I'm moving the entire Jeep as I move this originally I was just gonna the intake hose for this is gonna come out it's gonna wrap around I have more than enough room to go over the top of the engine into uh, the air cleaner which I have modified right here I had to modify the tip to take a two inch hose instead of a three inch because I thought three inch might look uh, a little too big but other than that we're basically ready for paint the last thing I need to do here is uh, my old crappy floor I need to make a cover for that down there for the gas pedal and then uh, just kind of make sure there's no burrs left on the cage and while I'm waiting for the axle parts I'll be painting the rest of the Jeep trying to get all that uh, done as much as possible